Hey, I'm Richard Sroder with Google. I'm here with Corey Quinn to talk a little bit about multi-cloud. And uh, Corey, what, what do you do again? Remind me. Uh, there are days I wonder myself. Uh, primarily, it tends to be creating a scene on Twitter, it seems. But in my day job, I help companies fix their horrifying AWS bills, a problem that happens to everyone in the fullness of time. <laughs> so tell me something in your uh, real life that you only buy from a single vendor. Oh, dear Lord. Uh, easy. Underpants. I wound up getting them from Amazon only because one time it didn't work and I got their error page, which had refreshing pictures of dogs, which was kind of soothing. Now, if I listen to a lot of folks who will tell stories about the e-commerce world, oh, because I wasn't able to complete my underpants transaction, then I was never going to wear underpants that one day out of the week. In practice, I tried an hour later and it worked. Counter argument. If it wound up happening every third time I tried to buy underpants, I would probably spend a lot more money at Target. <laughs> I was afraid you were gonna have like a chest wax guy or like a hamster guy. So I'm glad that we, we stuck with underpants, that's good. Exactly, we're gonna make sure that we keep this at least somewhat appropriate for folks to wind up displaying proudly on social media. Yeah, that's good. Uh, give me a case when it does make sense to do multi-cloud, Corey. Uh, sure, you're a big company. You acquire another company that is doing something in a cloud provider you're not doing anything in. Should you migrate that in? Probably not. It doesn't add much as far as business value goes. It's gonna be incredibly obnoxious to do. It's gonna be expensive, take longer than everyone thinks. And what's the business upside to this? It feels like that's one of those things that doesn't often have a good answer other than, well, we're all in on provider X, so it's important that we migrate everything that holds still long enough into that provider. Why? So Duckbill's multi-cloud, right? We're absolutely multi-cloud. We wind up using, for example, our infrastructure lives on mostly AWS. Our code stuff, of course, lives on GitHub because we're not irresponsible enough to use code commit. And our email runs through G Suite because frankly, I'd rather you run email servers than we do it ourselves. Yeah, makes sense. So when is it, a, you kind of alluded to it, when's it a terrible idea to do multi-cloud? The idea of having this one workload that you're going to deploy to any kind of multi-cloud environment. Oh, we want to build this thing so it can seamlessly be deployed to any provider that we choose. Except you don't. You deploy it to one provider and it remains an aspirational form of multi-cloud. Kind of like a DR plan you never bother to test. And in theory, we could deploy it elsewhere. That's why we're building things like load balancers from primitives ourselves it doesn't buy you anything and it slows you down, down your feature velocity. If you're gonna do that, make sure that the strategic upside makes sense. I wanna be clear, my point has never been multi-cloud is always bad. My point is make sure you understand why you're doing it before you do it and not just because Gartner said it was a good idea. Yeah. What do you have to say for those folks who worry about locking into a given cloud? How do you kind of negate that a little bit and that concern? You're already locked in. That might not be the most reassuring thing to hear, but you've hired staff based upon expertise with a provider, whomever that provider happens to be. The way that they handle identity federation, the way that they handle security, the way that their networks work, and the way that their services fail. And let's be serious, it's cloud. They're built on top of computers. Everything fails in the fullness of time, and making sure that you understand what that degraded mode looks like is fundamentally important. Yeah, great point. What piece of advice do you have for someone, either they were already accidentally multi-cloud, they're trying to figure out how they get a handle on it, or they're starting down this journey for whatever reason, what kind of fundamental thing do they have to get right? Uh, I would start by talking to someone who's done what you think you want to do and asking them what they wish they'd done differently. That that seems to be an undervalued skill in the world of talking to people who are where you're heading and if you could do it all over again, what would you do differently? Sometimes they'll give you great advice. Sometimes they'll say nothing at all, which is usually a lie. Other times they'll just start screaming incoherently because they have seen things that you too will see if you continue down this path. It really depends. It comes down to understanding the reason behind why you're doing what you're doing and making sure that it resonates in the right ways. It, it sounds like there's this big mystique behind it, but there isn't. Just make sure you're doing it because of an actual problem you have and not this theoretical problem you think you might encounter five years from now. Mm -hmm. Is there an aspect of it that you think is easier than people think? Sure, on, on some level, depending upon what you're doing, it's really easy, in most cases, to wind up swapping out one CDN for another, for example, right up until the point where you start shoving logic into the CDN, at which point you are more or less trapped. If you have a bunch of varnish rules that are being implemented by your CDN, you're not gonna have a great time moving away. Whereas if it's just pure caching and points of presence, well, different story entirely. But I'd take it a step further than that. 
Before you decide to go all in on multi-cloud as a strategy, take the existing cloud a workload lives in and move it to a second region in that provider. You've got, presumably, full API compatibility, everything behaves the same way, and it takes most of these concerns off the table. Once you've done that, see how easy it was and then plan accordingly. Spoiler, it's harder than it looks. Awesome, that is amazing advice. Corey, I appreciate you taking a couple of minutes to chat with me today and then impart some wisdom on everybody on maybe how to do multi-cloud just a little bit better or not at all. 